How's it going, Rednecks? Today I'm here with a uh, disaster transport, and I'm getting ready to replace my uh, brake lines. I have uh, pretty rusted out brake lines on this thing, so I think it's time to address the issue before it becomes an issue. And uh, first things first, I need to figure out what size line I have. So what I'm going to do is I take a quarter inch wrench, and I slide that over top the line, and that tells me I have a quarter inch line. If there's a play to the wrench, then I'll have a 3 16 brake line. Now that I know what size brake line I'm going to be running, I need to decide what type of brake line I'm going to be running. And there are several different types. you got got uh, coated steel. This is copper nickel plated. Those are the only two I have on hand. These t this is uh, typically found in your auto parts store. I bought that kit on uh, Amazon. You also have stainless steel. You have galvanized. And uh, they all have their benefits. Steel is going to be kind of a tougher, like harder to bend line, where this stuff is really easy to bend, manipulate, move around. Stainless steel is extremely hard, but dang does it look good. And galvanizing, I gotta say, I've never used, but I'm sure it's pretty close to this right here. So, what do you say we get started by uh, going over what I have planned? Since this is a dune truck and an off-road rig, I'm going to use the steel line because it's going to offer a better protection against like ramping, moving around, rubbing through stuff, where I have a fear that that nickel copper plated stuff is going to move around real easy because it's easier to bend. So I'm going to stick with this. Not only am I going to use this, but I'm going to eliminate the ABS on this truck. I'm going to come right out of the uh, master cylinder here and uh, how I'm going to go about that is your first piston here is for your bra uh, front brakes and the secondary piston is for your rear brakes. So all I'm going to do is instead of going from here all the way down to the ABS unit and then come back around to the brakes, I'm going to go right from here, go to my brake and I'm going to tee in and then I'm going to go right around to the uh, passenger side. And then the front one is just going to go straight back to the rear axle. So first things first, I want to pull the uh, tires off, break the bleeders loose, get the reservoir and all the lines drained out, and then we can get started on uh, making our brake lines. As you can see, the uh, brake reservoir only emptied in the back here. It did not empty in the front. And that's because there's a divider wall in here to divide the front and rear from each other. And as you can see, I bled out the front all the way and the rear still has some in there because I haven't bled it out yet. And I'm not gonna get to that right now. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna start removing the brake lines in the front so I can start redoing them. And I have a few options of removing this uh, nut right now or your uh, brake line screw. You can use an open end wrench, a line wrench, or since we're not keeping any of it, I'm gonna cut it with any means necessary, and I'm gonna take a socket, pop a socket onto it, and break it loose. And that's a good method to use because, uh, once again, since we're not saving any of this, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to remove all this. So what do you say we start removing all the front lines and then uh, we can start bending our uh, new line. Well, Rednecks, I have all the uh, hoses removed for the uh, front brake lines, and I went to all four auto parts stores around my area, and nobody has a quarter inch T fitting, so I'm going to have to wait for mine to come in from Amazon, and I will make sure to link everything uh, I'm using in this video in the description below, so hopefully you guys can be better uh, prepared for this, but yeah, I guess next time I see you, hopefully I'll have all my parts. 
Well, Rednecks, it's been a few days and uh, things have escalated a little bit. As you can see, the whole front clips off the truck and I'm getting ready to do the head gaskets on the uh, motor, but more about that in another video. Right now, let's go over what I got sitting over here. Uh, my uh, T here, my uh, splitter finally came in, so I got my splitter from the stop shop as well as I got some more fittings all the uh, descri or, um, all the links for this stuff will be in the description it's kind of nice I got a pack of three pretty cheap um, and then here's the fittings right here out of this bag right here this is going to be for the master cylinder and then the these three are going to be for my T and then these two right here will be for the right front brake and the uh, left front brake so right down there so we'll have all new fittings for that as well as here's my uh, brake line right here. So what do you say we start running that? I want to start over there and make my way along this channel here, putting it in all these grommets again, and then get to right here where my T is going to be, and then we get to flare that. So we're going to go over that here in a second, but let me get this all bent up, and uh, and then we'll get to how I'm going to flare these. Just like the wind, she slipped through. With the passenger side brake line all bent up, the uh, first thing I want to do is uh, put a flare on it and put one of these uh, nuts on so I can thread it in and I want to do that on the other side. And traditionally, I would use this tool right here. You put your uh, size brake line in one of these, then you use this die along with this to make a bubble flare and then you finish it off with this thing to make a double flare. And I got to be honest, it usually takes me two or three times to make a good flare with that. Now recently, I purchased this guy. You uh, insert your brake line into here, tighten these two clamps down, uh, you insert this, you thread it in, it'll make a uh, bubble flare, you flip it around, thread it in, and it'll make a double. I also purchased this guy, this is a deburring tool, so that'll deburr the inside, and that'll deburr the outside. So. I've only done maybe 10 flares with that so far, and I have yet to mess one up. So let's see if we can get through with this job, which will be six flares. All them flares up there are going to have to go on here, and we'll see if we can get by with doing six without messing up. So without no further ado, what do you say we uh, start step one, and don't forget these guys first before doing your flare. So this is step one. Insert your uh, nut onto your line, and then flare it. Well, I gotta admit, that tool right there is absolutely amazing. So simple to use, and it made two perfect flares without any uh, trouble. So, what do you say we get this line ran, and then we make the other two, and I will get back with you guys once all that is uh, done.
Well, Rednecks, I gotta admit, I'm pretty proud of this line right here. And uh, that flare tool made six perfect flares, and uh, I'm glad I invested in that thing. But before I did this, I was gonna clean my uh, reservoir out because I figured now is a better time than ever to do it. And when I was removing the reservoir, sand got down into here. There was sand, uh, there's like an O-ring seal in here, and sand got in there. So I removed the uh, master cylinder, cleaned it all up, and painted it. And then as well as obviously I cleaned this, I tried dish soap on it. It wasn't working. Hot water wasn't working. What I ultimately ended up using was uh, scrubbing bubbles for your uh, shower. And I sprayed that in the top here, sprayed it in the bottom there. And I tell you what, that worked almost instantaneously. And then I just heated this thing up in my uh, oven for a little bit just to make sure all the water was out of it. So yeah, that thing turned out pretty good. But what do you say we take my uh, unique little line here that's going to go from our uh, T, and then that's going to go up to our uh, master cylinder. Well, there we go. With the uh, front brakes all done on this thing, I'm not going to fill that reservoir yet because I still want to do the rear brakes, which is going to be uh, going from here straight to the back. Right now, it goes from there to the ABS unit and then to the back. So, next video, we'll be eliminating the ABS unit, seeing how much that weighs because that can be added to our uh, weight reduction as well as just finishing up the brake lines in general. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and get back to work. Share your intel with us, but not your advancement.